Good morning. Good morning. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let's rejoice and be glad in it. Give God some praise for your being here today. Hallelujah. If you're glad to be here, give God some praise. Listen, y'all make more noise than that at football games. I'm going to say that again. If you're glad to be here, give God some praise. Don't give it to me. I didn't wake you up this morning. Don't give it to me. I didn't start you on your way. Don't give me the praise. Give him the praise. He gave you a reasonable portion of your life, your health, and your strength. The word says that everything, let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Amen. Our brothers uh, are going to open us up in devotion. Give God some praise for our deacons. Careful. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. Amen. It's just so good to see you. It's Communion Sunday. God bless you. We get to break the bread of life one more time. Amen. Amen. This is devotion time. Amen. Everybody is a choir member. Amen. Everybody can sing these songs. Amen. So then come and help us out on our the collective devotion. Amen. Amen. The Lord is blessing me right now. Oh. The Lord, yeah, is blessing me right now, oh, right now. Mm, the Lord, is blessing me right now. Psalms 23. It says, The Lord is my shepherd. I share not want. He making me to lie down in green pastures. He lead me beside the still waters. He restored my soul. He lead me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, do I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. I will feel no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod, thy staff, thou comfort me. Thou prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemy. Thou anoints my head with oil. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. May God have a blessing to the readers and hearers of his most holy word. Jesus Uh-huh. 
heart in prayer. Oh, Heavenly Father, God, thank you once again, oh, Heavenly Father, for allowing us to assemble one more time, dear Lord God. On the sound of my weak voice, dear Lord God, we just want to say thank you. Thank you, thank you, Lord. For another day, oh, Heavenly Father God. Father God, we thank you for your angels that watched over us last night as we slumbered and slept, dear Lord God. Then you saw fit, Father, that you woke us up this morning to see the brightness of a new day, dear Lord God. A day that we never seen before, Father. And I just want to say thank you, Lord. Father God, I lift up every church door that's open in your holy name this morning, dear Lord God. Father God, I thank you for our pastor. Praying, oh Heavenly Father God, that you will continue to crown his head with wisdom and knowledge from on high. That he may lead us and guide us in the way that you would have us to go, Father God. Then, Father God, look down upon Eastern Star's entire church family, dear Lord God. Father God, some are sick among us, oh Heavenly Father God. I lift up the sick and the shut in to you, dear Lord God, this morning. Then, Father God, look down upon the bereaved family, those who have lost loved ones, Father God. Go with them and stand by them. Let them know that you're God, and besides you, oh Heavenly Father God, there's no other Father God. Father, if I had a thousand tongues this morning, I couldn't thank you enough for all that you have done for me, Father God. So I just want to lift my hand to thee, Father, because you're worthy. You're worthy to be praised, oh, Heavenly Father, God. Then, Father, God, I ask in the mighty name of Jesus that you continue to build a fence around our children, oh, dear Lord God. As they go to and from home to school, I pray that you build a fence around them, Father, God, that no hurt, harm, and danger may come upon them, oh, Heavenly Father, God. Then, Father, God, today as we get ready to protect Participate in the Lord's Supper, oh Heavenly Father God. I ask in the mighty name of Jesus, dear Lord God, if you find anything in us that shouldn't be, dear Lord God, I pray that you remove it from us, oh Heavenly Father God. We just want to praise you. We just want to lift up your holy name because you're worthy to be praised, oh Heavenly Father God. Then, Father God, when I have done all that I can do on this side, I pray that you have a place for me somewhere in your kingdom where every day will be Sunday. And Sabbath would have no end. These and all of the blessings I ask this morning in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I just want to praise him forever and ever and ever for you done for me yes in that glory for honor that all belong to you thank you Jesus for
If he's been good to you, you need to praise him. Wave your hand this morning and say, God been good. He's worthy this morning. He's worthy this morning to be praised. Uh-huh. Yeah. Let's bring thanks glory and honor. It all belongs to you. Thank you, Jesus. to a close. You know, it's good to know that we have a God that said that he would never leave us. He said, I'll never forsake you. And he said, I'll be with you always. And we know we have a Savior that's coming back. The Bible says he's coming back like a thief in the night. You ever wondered how a thief comes, though? First of all, he comes unannounced. A thief ain't going to tell you he's coming. And that's how Jesus is coming. Another way he comes is he only comes for valuable things. A thief ain't going to take your mop and your broom or nothing like that. He's going to take what's valuable. And that's what Jesus is coming back for. He's coming back for his church, the body of Christ. And one more way a thief comes is he usually leaves more than he takes. And again, that's how Jesus is coming. The Bible te teaches us that only a few are going to make it in. I pray that all of us be in that number when the saints go marching in. Let's have a good day today.
Welcome to the Eastern Star Baptist Church. Welcome, Eastern Star Baptist Church. We're so glad you're here. Bible study theme, When God Says No. Join us for virtual or in-person Bible study on Wednesday at 6 o'clock p.m. Facebook Live. Attention youth, every Wednesday, mission and choir rehearsal. Youth mission at 6 p.m., rehearsal at 7 p.m. Parents, please bring your kids to youth missions on Wednesday at 6 o'clock p.m. ESBC Business Meeting on Wednesday, November 8, 2023, at 7 o'clock p.m. Men's Annual Conference and Cook-Off on Saturday, November 11th at 9 o'clock a.m. The general election takes place on November 7th, 2023. Your vote matters. November is Pancreatic Cancer Awareness Month, Military Family Month, National Diabetes Awareness Month, and National Adoption Month. Three ways to give. Drop it in the basket. Give now with Givelify. Use Givelify app. Mail or drop it off at 548 East 15th Street, Port Arthur, Texas, 77640. Have a blessed week. Thank you for joining us at Eastern Star Baptist Church. And now we will hear from our pastor, the Reverend Vester Thompson. Now y'all know I'm not him. <laughs> I need to put emphasis on the cook-off this Saturday for the men, the men of Eastern Star. We need you here. Amen. We got our our black uh, t-shirts with the uh, for the conference. I believe everybody got one. If they don't, uh, uh, talk to Sister Grace. <laughs> um, and most uh, another thing. Oh, this Sunday, Ben's we have in the men's conference Saturday. We wanted the brother uh, the male course to sing Sunday. Amen. So that means the male chorus brothers, we need the rehearsal this Thursday. Amen. I know it's not our normal Thursday, but we need to rehearse for Sunday because the men's gonna men's just gonna do everything this weekend. Amen. Hey man, ain't that nice? Ain't that nice, y'all? We're gonna do everything this weekend. Amen. So, brothers, if you if if, if you you listening and um and you don't know, now you know. This Thursday, we have a male uh, mail course rehearsal. Amen? Amen. Now we're going to hear from our pastor. <laughs> Amen. 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 I, got, I have a few very, very important announcements that I would like to make. Um, First of all, let me, let, me, let me start by saying this. There are, there are job opportunities that are, in, uh, that are available. There are job opportunities there that are, that are available and there is free training for it. Free classes that are provided by Lamar State College. Now here's Here's, here's what uh, I want us to, to think about as a church. Um, <clears throat> we are able to, to provide resources for, for members. We're able to do that. I want to take a step, take, take it a step forward with our thinking. I want us to be able to not only be able to provide resources for our members, but provide opportunities for people to create their own resources. Y'all ain't trying to feel that. I'm gonna say that again. When you give resources, resources that are given are sometimes temporary. 
But when you help people create their own resources, you empower them. Y'all ain't trying to feel me. The gospel is about empowering people. The gospel is about empowering people. And in this case, I want to empower people to create their own resources. I have handouts for commercial driver's training. You can get your CDL for free. Y'all, I'll wait on y'all. You get your CDL for free. Here are the prerequisites. Must be 18 years of age. Must have a valid Texas driver's license. Must successfully complete a physical examination or a drug screen. Guess what, if you can't complete a drug screen, you ain't got no business work for nobody, no way. The only thing for the driver's part that you're required to do is your own, pay, pay for your own drug screen and background check. And guess what? Bechtel almost uh, guarantees you a job upon completing a free course. That's one. Y'all ain't ready for me today. Trust me, y'all ain't ready for me today. Also, there is an intermediate certificate in carpentry, level one and two. Free class. When you finish this class, you're able to get a job working at a refinery doing contract work. No money out of your pocket. Stop, stop telling me ain't no jobs available. Stop telling me people ain't hiring me because I'm black. I don't want to hear all that. No, no, no. My hope is to empower people to create their own resources. Am I in here today? All right. Now, having said that, I want to meet with all of our young adults. And this is how, you know, you know you're a young adult. If you're in between the ages of 18 and 35, you're a young adult. If you're in between the ages of 18 and 35, I want to see you after church. Y'all are an important part of the ministry here at Eastern Star Missionary Baptist Church. And I need you, I need to see you after church today. And if y'all know somebody who's between the ages of 18 and 35, I, yeah, uh-huh, 18 and 35, if, if you know somebody that's not here, let them know Ray, I'm looking for them. I need to meet with y'all. I need to see y'all. It's, it's important to me that I meet with y'all after church. I know we may be small in numbers, but I'm working on something here. And I need y'all to work with me, okay? So if you 36, you 36, I want you to look forward to the Season Saints ministry. That's what I want you to do. I want you to get excited about the Season Saints. Get excited, cause you next, you next in line. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> all right, now I got all that out the way. <laughs> Sister Henrietta Robinson, would you please stand? Yeah, would you please stand? Congratulations to Sister Henrietta Robinson for job well done. 30 years of service at her job at Krista St. Mary <laughs> Hospital. <laughs> Hallelujah. She'll be turning 60 years, oh, I, 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 I'm just reading what's, what's on here. 60 years young, and uh, 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 both, will, both, both will happen on the same day, the 19th, uh, her 30 years and her 60 year birthday 
at the same time. I, okay, I got that right? Congratulations. We salute you. Amen. Your brothers and sisters in Christ salute you. God bless you. God bless you. All right. Uh, I know I was supposed to be saying something. Oh, vote. Please vote. Please vote. Y'all know I'm an advocate of voting. Please vote. On the 7th, if you missed early voting, on the 7th is your day. And I want you to be able to, to let your voice be heard. Amen? Amen. Amen. Sister Malvo uh, is back from California uh, where uh, uh, she buried her sister-in-law. Right? Her sister-in-law. Uh, so we, uh, we let you, uh, we're letting you know that we've been praying, praying for you, pr praying for you and your family. Uh, and we're glad to have you back uh, from California. God bless you. God bless you. Uh, good to see you again. Okay? All right. Um, all right. So I got time. I got time. November birthdays. November birthdays. Let's get it. Let's get it. Stand up, November. Let's get it, November. Let's get it. Let's get it. November birthdays are in the house. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. This looks like a good month. Moon. Oh, look at Moon. Moon birthday in November. I hear you, Moon. All right. All right. Hey, all right. Ricky, you ready? virtually as well as those who are with us in person if you're visiting Eastern Star we want you to stand up amen amen give love give love show love amen 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 if you and if you don't mind before you sit down if you would give us your name and your church church home if you have a church home y'all all the way from New Iberia. Hey, the next time y'all come, y'all give me y'all number. I need y'all to stop by Billy's. <laughs> Pick your boy up some Buddha and come on. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. God bless y'all. Hebrews 13, 1 and 2 reminds us to let brotherly love continue and be not forgetful to entertain strangers whereby some have entertained angels unawares. God led y'all here today to worship with us and we want y'all to do whatever God lays on your heart to lift his name because when praises go up, blessings come down. God bless y'all. Thank y'all again. Amen. Our brothers are coming now to receive our offering. Amen. It is offering time. Where it says don't give grudgingly or of necessity, but cheerfully. Because God loves a cheerful giver. Thank you. 
Father in heaven, Lord, we, we are excited today to give unto you, Father. We give with a cheerful heart, Father, and a right mind and spirit. Lord, we say thank you. We ask that you would do what is needed to be done uh, to the building and uplifting of your kingdom, Father. And at the same time, would you be so kind as to bless us abundantly, Father. Some 40, 20, 40, and 60-fold, Father. Lord, open up the doors of the windows of heaven and pour us out a blessing that we don't have room enough to receive. Father, we thank you and we go forward with excitement in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.
put your hands together. Come on, clap your hands. More words. Come down, mighty king. Help us down, name. Come down, almighty. Help us down, name. We come to praise. We come to praise. 
Shall we pray? Eternal God, our Father, we come before your presence this morning offering praise for your blessings, for your grace, for your mercy, for what you've done for us that is beyond measure. You've made ways in our lives. You've opened doors. You've healed our bodies. You've blessed our families. You've made our enemies behave. We thank you, Lord. Now, Lord, we come in this house desiring to hear a word from you. We're not here for shape, for show, for form, for fashion. We come, Father, because we need you and we can't get along without you. Lord, have your way in the preacher this morning. Take my mind and think your thoughts. Take my mouth and speak your words. Order my steps in your word. We cling to the promise that your word would not come back to you void. That's what we're claiming. Because we want to be changed and challenged by what you have to say to us today. Have your way, Lord. In the name of Jesus. Amen. If you have your Bibles with you today, we're in the New Testament book of 1 Peter, the first chapter, verses 6 through 8. 1 Peter, the first chapter, verses 6 through 8. Amen. Reading from the NIV translation of this passage of scripture, and those of uh, you who've been with us uh, for these past few weeks, whether virtually in person or, or in person, you know we've been in this series that we've entitled "When When God Says No," uh, and it is a reality, my brothers and sisters, that whenever we pray to God, His answer is not going to always be yes. And uh, I qualify that statement by uh, saying to us that we don't always tell our children yes. Because if we did, well, you know the rest. Every now and then, a no is good for your development. Uh, let me put it like this. A, a good no ain't ever hurt nobody. Amen. 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 So that is our challenge. Uh, and this morning, we're in 1 Peter, starting at verse 6, reading down to verse 8. Of course, I'm reading from the NIV. Hear, hear the word of our Lord. In this you greatly rejoice, though now for a little while you may have had to suffer grief in all kinds of trials. These have come so that your faith of greater worth than gold, which perishes even though refined by fire, may be proved genuine and may result in praise, glory, and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. Though you have not seen him, you love him. And even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and are filled with an in inexpressible and glorious joy. Amen. 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 For a few moments with the prayers, I'd like to talk from this subject when the bottom falls out. Amen. When the bottom falls out. My brothers and sisters, every now and then, thank you, ushers. Uh, we're praying for Sister uh, pray, uh, praying for Sister Gretchen. Text earlier, she's not feeling well. Uh, we're praying for uh, Sister Scott, uh, who's also not feeling well this morning. Uh, amen. They are they are in our prayers. If if, you, if you're watching, we're praying for you. Amen. Uh, in this life, in this life, 
How many of y'all can testify that every now and then Murphy's Law takes effect? That what can go wrong generally will go wrong. Uh, you will sometimes uh, uh, miss the, miss, miss taking out the trash when you realize that the trash truck is on your street. What, what can go wrong will go wrong. Every now and then when you realize when it dawns on you that you're not a plumber uh, and, and, and you messed up some pipes that you tried to fix and it cost more to fix it than it would have cost had you just left it alone. What can go wrong will go wrong. Can I suggest, my brothers and sisters, that sometimes things go wrong not because you've done wrong, but it could be because you've done right. I think I'm going to say that again. Things don't always go wrong because you've done wrong. Every now and then, things go wrong because you've done right. Uh, in Wednesday night's Bible study, we were sharing the experience of Job about having everything and losing everything. Not because he had done wrong, but because he has done right. And my brothers and my sisters, for those of you who did not hear me Wednesday night, accept this challenge from me that every now and then, when your success is a result of your hard work and God's favor, every now and then, your name going to come up in a situation. I think I'm going to say it again. When you're doing well, when you are successful, when you are prosperous, when you got it going on, every now and then, your name just going to happen to come up. And sometimes your name doesn't always come up in the most favorable situations. But when you're doing well, every now and then, your name is going to come up. Watch this. The world is out of fellowship with God, and that's why sometimes bad things happen to good people. I think I'm going to say that again. Because the world is out of fellowship with God, there is evil everywhere. Because the world is out of fellowship with God, there are people that don't like you, and they don't even know why they don't like you. When the world is out of fellowship with God, what you do right could could. Could, could, could be uh, 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 taken for what you are doing wrong when the world is out of fellowship with you. They don't see the good in what you do. They always see the bad in what you do. And whenever the world is out of fellowship with God, my brothers and sisters, every now and then we find ourselves going through trials and tribulations. Here's what I want you to do when you're going through. Number one, don't blame yourself. Please do not blame yourself because when you, when, you, when, you, when, you, when you realize that you're going through a trial and a tribulation, you have to understand, watch this, that we wrestle not against flesh and blood. We wrestle, uh, we, 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 we wrestle against powers, against principalities, against the darkness of this, of this age. When you're going through, don't blame other people. Because it ain't their fault that you're going through. Because God has every right. God has the power to make your enemies your footstool anytime he decides to do so. So whenever I'm going through something, I don't blame, bl blame stuff on people because I'm giving people the power that they don't even deserve. They don't have a heaven or a hell to put me in. You ain't got the power to stop what I'm doing. You can't get in my way. You can only do what God allows you to do because every now and then, my brothers and sisters, God would allow people to get in your way. It's not because of what they're doing. You got to understand that there is a bigger picture to what you're going through. And you give people too much power when you say that they have the power to make your day, to break your day, to stop your situation. I don't give people that kind of power, my brothers and sisters, because power does not belong to them. Power belongs to God. And if God says so, God can stop it. God can start it. God can block it. 
God can unblock it, and I don't give power to people for nothing. Some of us, watch this, watch this. When we go through some stuff, some of us don't think about uh, what we're doing until we suffer. And that's why suffering is so important to us. But watch this. Here's what I want you to do. Here's what I want you to do. I don't want you uh, to waste a good suffering by going through it and not learning nothing. You waste a good suffering when you go through your trouble and you're the same as you was when you came out of it. Watch this. Watch this. I'll get, I'll get to my text because Peter is saying in this text, when you read this text, Peter is saying when you're in trials, rejoice while you're in it. Rejoice. No, that ain't how I want to say it. Rejoice when you get in it. Rejoice while you're in it. And rejoice when you come out of it. Because the old preacher used, used, to, used to tell me this, that we're in one of three categories. We're either uh, 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 on our way to a storm, we're currently in a storm, or we're coming out of a storm. And that's what I want to share with you, my brothers and sisters. Why you, why, why you on your way to it, rejoice. Why you in it, rejoice. When you come out of it, rejoice. While you're going in it, throw up your hands and say hallelujah. While you're in it, say, Lord, I praise you. When you come out of it, say, Lord, I thank you. My brothers and sisters, because when you rejoice, rejoice is not based on uh, things going well, but rejoicing is when you can give God praise even though you're sick. When you can give God praise even though you're not feeling well. When you can give God praise even though your bank account is in trouble. Is there anybody here that came to church today? You may be in a storm and the only way you can respond to God while you're in what you're in is just throw your hands up and say hallelujah. Three things I'd like to live from this text. When the bottom falls out, what do you do? Number one, you rejoice in the providence of God. You rejoice in the providence of God. Watch this. In verse 6, in your King James, because I had to refer to the King, King James, and, and, and listen, I almost read the King James because the King James was the version that made me shout. But I said, no, I got to go ahead and give them the NIV because sometimes uh, everybody may not understand what the King James is saying. But in the King James, uh, if you look at verse 6, uh, Peter uh, uh, says to the reader, if need be. If need be. Watch this. Watch this. Uh, uh, uh. He says that, which is to suggest that God allows trials in our lives because there is a need that he's trying to meet. It's in this text. Watch this. Uh, 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 uh. It lets me know that there are some deficiencies in my life that can only be addressed by a trial. In other words, if there's something broken, the only thing that can fix it is a trial. Watch this. Uh, uh, let me just give you this example for just a moment. See, God loves us so much that based on our relationship with him, there are times when uh, love has to hurt us in order to correct us. God loves us so much to every now and then 
He'll allow the bottom to fall out in your situation so that he can get your attention. Because watch this, sometimes, and I, 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 I hope there's somebody in, in here that can relate, that we can, uh, 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 we can mismanage our love for people by giving them everything. And every now and then, God says, I have to allow your situation to fall apart because loving you is hurting me. And in all, see, ain't no sense in both of us being hurt. So here's what I have to do is I have to hurt you in order to correct you. So that's why Peter says, if it is necessary, there are some things that we go through with God that are necessary. But then watch that. He didn't stop there. He says manifold trials. He says all kinds of trials. Not, 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 there, not, not is there just one situation that trials are necessary for, but it's another one. He says, watch this, uh, 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 manifold, which means that they come in all forms. Has anyone ever testified that if it ain't one thing? You get one child straight. The other one start raising hell. Get stuff straight at the house. All hell breaks loose at work. If it ain't one thing, it's another one. But Peter says that no matter if they meet a need, no matter if they come in all kinds of forms, here's what I need you to do. I need you to rejoice because whatever you're going through is providential. Providence, providence. The providence, we get the word uh, 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 if, if, you, if you break it down in the Greek, it's pro-video, which simply means to see beforehand. Uh, in other words, God sees further down the road than we do. And before we get to where we're going, God says, here, let me give you this problem. Because this problem is going to help you handle What's in your future? Yeah. Oh, I thought, listen, I thought everybody was going to shout right there. Is there anybody here that's able to look back over your life and say, Lord, thank God for the problem that you gave me. Because when I look back over my life, I see why you gave it to me. I see why you told me no. I see why my heart had to break. I saw why I had to cry. Thank you, God, because a look back. I give you thanks for what I had to go through. Peter said, thank him in advance for what you're going through. But not only when the bottom falls out do you rejoice in the providence of God. Watch this. You resign to the process of God. You resign to the process of God. Verse 7 tells us that God is up to something. He says that uh, 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 what you have is more precious than gold. And the reason he says that is because, watch this, there is a refining process in gold. So in other words, watch this, uh, what you have, trials help it to last. Watch this, watch this. Uh, uh, although gold is precious, it's perishing. And gold can only purchase the things that are perishing. The more you heat gold, the less it loses what it is. Watch this, watch this. Uh, uh, so trials, as it relates to this text, work in the opposite direction. Trials are not me meant to take strength from you. 
Trials are designed to put strength in you. Uh, uh, when Deontay uh, was playing for Alabama, back when they were winning all those championships, they were, you know, they spent most of their seasons undefeated. Uh, as a matter of fact, I think he only, uh, as a member of the Tide, for four years, he only lost three games. They were always in the big games. What they had uh, in the off season during the summer months was called the fourth quarter program. Uh, and the fourth quarter program was a, was, a, was a rigorous training camp that wasn't enjoyable, but it was necessary. It was necessary, Wes, because it prepared Alabama to get stronger and physical as the game went on their mental and physical strength would increase as the game went on, as the opposing team's strength and mentality would decrease. Watch this. Every game after the third quarter, if you ever seen Alabama play or any other team for that matter, when you see them play, when they get to the fourth quarter, what they do? They throw fours up. They throw fours up to let you know that whatever you bring their way, they're ready for. And Scott Cochran, who was a strength and conditioning coach, here's what he did. All th throughout the whole fourth quarter of any Alabama game, he would roam the sidelines with both fours up, which was a reminder to his team, watch this, that they were just built different. It was something about Alabama that nobody else was ready for. They, 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 they were built different. And can I help somebody today? I came to church today, and I'm just going to throw my four hands up because I want to encourage somebody who came to church today, and they may be in the fourth quarter, that you built different. It's the fourth quarter. We may endure for a night. It's the fourth quarter. But joy comes in the morning. It's the fourth quarter. No weapon. Formed against me shall prosper. It's the fourth quarter. I'm more than a conqueror in all things. It's the fourth quarter. God has not given me a spirit of fear, but a power of love and a sound mind. It's the fourth quarter. And we know all things work together for good to them that love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. It's the fourth quarter now unto him who is able to do exceeding abundantly above all you can ask or speak it's the fourth quarter and God is just getting started it's the fourth quarter hey 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 is there anybody here that's gonna hold on to the fourth quarter eyes have not seen ears have not heard Finally, we realize the power of God. In verse 8, Peter speaks of the difference between him and his readers. He says that they loved him without seeing. Watch this. Peter was privileged to have known Christ while he was on earth. Uh, he spent time around Christ during his earthly ministry. His reading audience had not. They, 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 they did not have the joy he had, but they still had joy. I'm, I'm, listen, I'm going somewhere with this. And then Peter goes on to say that, that, that they believed and did not behold. When you have faith, watch this, and you operate in your faith, you understand that faith is not measured by what you see. Uh, uh, watch this. 
There was a true story. An elderly lady had gone to a summer Bible conference. Uh, uh, she was enjoying this conference. She had fallen and broken her leg. And the pastor went to visit her. When he went to visit her, she said to him, I know the Lord led me to the conference, but I just didn't see this happening. I, I, I don't see how any good can come out of this. Watch this. And then the pastor responded to her by saying to her, uh, and he quoted Romans 8 and 28, and he said to her that Romans 20, uh, 8 and 28 doesn't say anything uh, about us seeing things working together for our good. It says, I know and we know that all things work together for the good to them that love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. Listen, I don't see the pilot when I get on the plane, but I know that the pilot got enough experience with fly the plane that all I gotta do is get on and trust that the pilot knows what he's doing. I don't see what the doctor sees, but I know that when I go to the doctor, that he's got enough knowledge to know what's going on with me that I don't know. Is there anybody here that woke up on the alarm clock? Can I tell you what happened this morning? The alarm clock only let you know that you were still alive, that you still had breath in your body. It only let you know but the Lord had already touched me with its finger of love and been in my moments to roll on just a little while longer. Mama used to sing a song early in the morning. She used to say to me, there are some things I may not know. There are some places that I can't go. But I am sure of this one thing, that God is real, for I can feel him in my soul. Yes, God is real. Yes, God is real. How do I know he woke me up this morning, started me on my way, gave me a reasonable portion of my life, health, and strength, is there anybody here that knows God is real? Why don't you wave your hand? Why don't you wave your hand? God is real. God is real. I know. church we extend the privilege of the church there may be one today if you're here today we want you to come if you don't know Christ and the part of the sin we offer Christ to you if you are not a member of any church, we'd love to have you here at Eastern Star. And if you desire your prayer, we want you to come where you are. There are some things I may not know. There are some places 
places I can't go, but I for prayer this is evidence that God is a healer there is evidence here that God is a situation changer he's a burden bearer he's a load sharer we got witnesses here hallelujah Gracious and eternal God, how we thank you. We come before your presence rejoicing over your goodness, over your healing power, your saving power, over the way you deliver us, how you keep us from dangers that are seen and unseen, how when we're tried by the fire, we come through as pure gold. Thank you, Father, for allowing us to cling to your word because it's a lamp unto our feet, a light unto our path. When we don't know our way, we trust in you that you will show us the way. Thank you, Lord, for in times past, as we look back over our lives, we, we got the victory. You gave us the victory. Father, we understand now that every round of our lives goes higher and higher. Every trial takes us higher. Every sickness that we overcome, it takes us higher. Every heartache takes us higher. Every, every heartbreak takes us higher. Every problem is designed to elevate us. Thank you, Father, for helping us realize that through your word today. And because of that, we're going to rejoice. And these that have come for prayer today, Father, we know that there are others who wanted to come but weren't able to. Thank you, Lord, for the process that you're taking us through. And some of us, Father, are in the beginning of the process. Some of us are in the middle of the process. And some of us are close to the end of the process. But nevertheless, it's a process. Then, Father, the, the harder they get, 
the more you're trying to accomplish. We thank you for that right now, Father. We understand now we don't blame man for what we're going through. We don't blame ourselves, but we just trust in the process. With tears in our eyes, Lord, we trust the process. With pain in our hearts, we trust the process. Help us, Father. Be overcomers. You said that we were overcomers. And we believe what your word says about us. We believe that your word says about us that we're the head and not the tail. We're above and not beneath. We believe what your word says about us. Your word says that life and death are in the power of our tongue and we speak life. We believe what your word says about us. Your word says no weapon formed against us shall prosper. We believe what your word says about us. In the name of Jesus, give us that peace that surpasses our understanding. Help us as we navigate through this process of our lives to get safely to the other side of our situation. In the name of Jesus we pray, amen. amen. prepare our hearts and our minds to receive the Lord's Supper. Gracious Father, we'd like to thank you this morning. Father, we come to your table with nothing but gratitude this morning, Heavenly Father. Father, as we look out through the ranks of our lives, we see some of our friends and family members who probably hadn't made it back to the table one more time, Heavenly Father. But good days and bad days, Heavenly Father, we thank you for the table, oh God. Father, we thank you for the dying and the raising of your daughter and son, Jesus Christ, oh God for allowing us to make it back to the table, Heavenly Father. God, we ask for your divine protection and your provision for the next time we make it back to the table, oh God. These and many other blessings we ask and pray. In Jesus' name, we all said, Amen. Amen. <laughs>
Amen. Give God praise right now. Well, I, mean, I know you got your cup, cup in your hand, but just say amen. Amen. Marnia Charles is experiencing her first Lord's Supper. Amen. amen. She was baptized a month ago. And this is her first Lord's Supper. I'm so grateful for the Charles household. This is a major, it's a major day. Hey, baby. It's a major day. It's a major day. We got a few more to go, right? Yeah. We getting there. We getting there. Praise God. everyone been served? If anyone's been slighted, please raise your hand. Everybody's been served. Amen. On that Thursday evening, Jesus gathered, set the table with his disciples. Uh, and as they ate together, Jesus says, one of them will betray me, and the other will deny me. And they all ask in response, Lord, is it I? He says, even he who has his hands in the dish with me, but as often as you eat of my broken body, and drink of my shed blood, you show forth my death and my suffering until I come again. They did eat. And they did drink. Amen. I want to uh, say this real quick. I want to thank God for all of you who took advantage of that hour that y'all had to sleep. Spring and pool, y'all took advantage of it. A lot of y'all were here real early. Hey, Amen. I think some of y'all forgot. But uh, and also, uh, before we leave, between the ages of 18 and 35, I need y'all to meet over here, actually over here on my left side, on your right. Ages 18 to 35. Give me just a few moments of your time. Amen. But grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and him beyond a majesty, domain and power, now and forever. Amen. 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 